Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Good afternoon friends, so far we have uh, made an attempt to glance through wings, the aerofoil, plant form of wing, their importance. We have also talked about typical shapes of wing tips and what are their merits and demerits. From designer's point of view, we talked about canard when you are talking about the aspect ratio. When you talk about aspect ratio canard, that linkage is primarily we are talking about lifting canard. There are canards which are not supposed to be predominantly for working as a lifting surface, they are, the, they are like a control surfaces. They're aspect ratio may not be that high. At this point, we have just glanced through those and while coming for stability and control design, we will take each of this item precisely and see who qualifies for a particular configuration. In continuation to that, we will also quickly go through most popular tail configurations. To start with, I will not talk about various types of ingenious tails, but I will primarily talk about conventional tail and a T tail and try to highlight what are the merits and demerits and why it has evolved like that. Any other configurations we will be talking or discussing as and when required. When I talk about tail, when I say conventional tail, here tail I mean horizontal tail, you understand for an aircraft, for a conventional aircraft there is a horizontal tail which is horizontal stabilizer and there is a vertical tail which is vertical stabilizer. If you see for a conventional tail, the airplane will be like this. There is a vertical tail, there is a radar, there is a horizontal tail, there is an elevator and there is a wing and maybe engine here. And if I see the front view, it will be something like this. This is typically a conventional tail. You will find among the youth or also you can see in the design evolution, the stylish tail is T tail that is typically if this is my empennage and there is a vertical tail, this horizontal tail will be housed here. So it gives from the front if I see from here is if I see I will see this is the vertical tail and over that this is the horizontal tail. You are all familiar with this, right? First of all, let us ask ourselves a question, why do you need horizontal tail? And once you know why do you need, the next question is how much we need? Who decides? The first question I am addressing first, why do you need a horizontal tail? Why horizontal tail? If you revise your stability and control uh, lecture, you will immediately be able to answer if this is my fuse large, if this is the wing. Let us say this is somewhere is 
CG or let me say this is aerodynamic center, summer it is CG and this is horizontal tail, this is vertical tail. Horizontal tail will be required primarily for static stability in longitudinal plane. And also we know that horizontal tail is extremely important for a conventional airplane because it has to house elevator. In fact, part of the horizontal tail or whole horizontal tail could be an elevator which is required to pitch the aircraft up and down. Right? If I put this elevator up, then the aircraft will rotate about center of gravity and this direction you call pitch up. So, one is static stability and when I talk about static stability, if you recall that pitching moment C m versus alpha, the variation for small angle of attack is like that where this point where C m equal to 0 is the trim point you want to fly at this alpha. That means, at a given altitude moving at a particular speed you have decided an alpha, so that the enough lift is generated to balance the weight. And why do you say static stability? Because if for some reason alpha changes, then it automatically generates negative moment which tries to take airplane to trim alpha. Who generates this negative moment? The primary responsibility is from horizontal tail. It whatever additional angle of attack changes, the lift force is generated here and that gives you nose down moment as dictated here. So, horizontal tail is extremely important from the static stability point of view and also it has to house elevator, so this is horizontal tail, part of it can go down, can go up and it acts as an elevator and the elevator effectiveness depends upon the ratio between elevator area and or the tail area ST and elevator area. Right. Of course, there are planes which does not have tail, like typically flying wing. For a flying wing, if you want to fly, you need to have ensured that it has a reflex aerofoil, so that this gentleman is positive as well as aerodynamic center of the flying wing is behind center of gravity. So, I am not digressing towards flying wing, but I am talking about conventional aircraft. So, coming back to conventional aircraft, you see that if I want to fly at this stream, I need to ensure not only the slope is negative to the magnitude I designed, but also this C m at alpha equal to 0 should be, le should be greater than 0. And to be honest, it should have definite value for a given slope to have a trim at this alpha. So, C m naught has to be positive and to ensure that C m naught is positive, we heavily depend upon horizontal tail and you know that if this is the horizontal tail, we try to give a setting angle to the horizontal tail i t which is negative maybe order of 2 to 4 degrees the typical numbers right this is done to ensure that even if alpha equal to 0 it generates a force here and c g suppose is here it gives you a c m at alpha equal to 0 or c m not greater than 0 
So, depending upon whatever CM naught you require, you can set the setting angle. You also know that when you are talking about CM naught here, CM naught can come from CM naught tail primarily, CM naught wing and very small CM naught fuselage. So, message is maximum CM naught comes from tail setting angle. You can also get CM naught positive from the wing. If I have a cambered aerofoil wing, what I do, if this is the CG of the airplane, I ensure that AC of the wing is ahead of CG. Since it is a cambered aerofoil, so there will be some negative moment CM AC wing. So, I want CM naught wing to be positive. We see at alpha equal to 0 because it is cambered aerofoil. So, there will be CL naught which will act here and CL naught into this distance distance the CG and the AC of the wing that is the X bar non dimensionalized with minor derby cord. So, this will give me additional C m naught which comes through wing. So, message is if you only use tail setting angle to get C m naught desired and the tail setting angle becomes very large, it is always advisable whenever you are using a camber or a foil put the A C of the wing little ahead of C G of the airplane. So, you can effectively handle the negative effect of C M A C wing through tail setting and A C of the wing location together. Right? This we know in stability control, but just to complete the discussion, I thought I will mention this, but today since we are focused to horizontal tail, we are more focused that tail setting angle is required which is negative to ensure that we get some sort of a C m naught which is positive. Okay. So, you will find most of the airplane is having tail setting angle negative and in fact, you may adjust the tail setting angle depending upon what is the flight regime you are going to operate. Similarly, you have got vertical tail. And question always comes how high the vertical tail should be like similar question will come here how much tail size and you know that we try to answer that by using a term tail volume horizontal tail volume ratio as long as you keep it from 0.5 to 0.8 as the initial number, you are making a good beginning. We will come to all these things in detail design, but I, I thought I will mention it. For vertical tail also, we will have some sort of a ratio, which we will discuss. Only difference is, when I see V h tail volume ratio horizontal, it is S t area of the or in the tail L t distance from the aerodynamic center of the tail to C g of the airplane by S wing C bar. Right? So, this typical value let us say 0 0.5. When I try to see the number for vertical tail volume ratio, it is S vertical L vertical S wing into span of the wing. So, you can assume that L t and L v, L v is the location of aerodynamic center of the vertical tail from C g. So, they are almost same. S wing is anyway same. The difference is major difference is C bar and B. B is fairly large. This B is 
C times aspect ratio okay, for a rectangular wing. So, naturally you will find the vertical tail volume ratio as per number is concerned will be much less compared to tail volume ratio. It is primarily because the non dimensionalization has been done for V V by B not by C bar. So, do not think if the number is 0 0.02, 0 0.03 we are talking we are not giving lot of weightage to vertical fin it is just matter of how we have non dimensionalized it. So, this is important for a designer. Now, question is if I go on increasing this vertical fin what are the problems? Yes, you know vertical fins are required for directional stability it also plays important role in lateral stability. So, you do not want to make an airplane highly sensitive if we go on increasing the vertical tail then if it becomes highly directionally stable it becomes very sensitive to wind and you will immediately it correct this frequency increases you may not like it. But same time what point what we miss generally please understand if I am increasing the vertical size because we are afraid then actually I am encouraging drag due to vertical tail or vertical fin I am encouraging it to become more and more and the CG will be somewhere here this will give a nose up moment. So, if you are having a vertical fin unnecessarily I put a larger size as you try to accelerate you may have a pitch up tendencies. So, that also need to be careful when you are doing you are going to do the finer design final evaluation right. So, at this stage this thing should be clear in your mind. Another part also you should see when you talk about vertical tail the vertical tail has a end plate effect that is it is not like a horizontal tail where both the span extremities are open to atmosphere. So, generally if you read books and all you do not know how much should I take as the initial number for the vertical uh, fin or vertical tail span roughly if you take 1.3 times the horizontal tail one of the horizontal tail right. For example, if you have horizontal tail like this you take this area multiply by 1.3 or 1.5 and that can be good initial estimate for vertical fin. We will talk about exactness, but this is just to give you an idea how to start thinking in terms of conceptual sketch right. When I am talking about vertical tail this is the vertical tail and this is the rudder. The primary role of the rudder is for yaw control right roll control and also extremely important when the aircraft goes into stall and your aileron will not be effective rudder then plays an important role to adjust the spin. Also you realize for a twin engine airplane which you all know if twin engine airplane is there and one engine is here and another engine is here if one of the engine fails it will immediately give yawing moment. So, my rudder should be enough powerful to balance that yawing moment which is coming because of asymmetry of engine power. Most of the aircraft twin engine aircraft are designed primarily based on whether the rudder is sufficient or not to handle this asymmetry power which is linked to engine failure and also whether the rudder is enough powerful to handle the spin right. You will find in modern airplane there are double hinge double hinge rudders are there to increase the effectiveness. If I take the top view so 
if you see the top view, you will find two locations, maybe 30 percent, other 50 percent, 55 percent, there are locations where radar can be operated. So, it is found that it does help to increase the radar control power. Another way people increase radar control power is through all movable tail, let the whole vertical tail moves, let the whole horizontal tail moves and increase the elevator power. So, if you see different different evolution, you will find a lot of work was done on double hinge radar. I strongly recommend as I have been doing for all the lectures, please google and see what are the airplane they have designed this, read added article, read research articles, how much percentage, how do they quantify whether it is really doing good or bad or ugly, right. Okay. So, this I was touching on horizontal tail and vertical tail, keeping conventional aircraft in mind, but as I promised to start with, we will talk about T tail, some features of T tail. Typically, the horizontal tail etcetera, they are not cambered, they are symmetric. Okay. Now, you could see why do you want a T tail? One of the reason for this was that at angle of attack, little bit higher angle of attack, there will be wakes wing wake will be there and if the horizontal tail is in the upper side, it is likely to come into the wake of the wing and that may reduce the effectiveness of the horizontal tail. Although it is found that if you put this at the center, it is good enough, right. But to be doubly sure at high, high angle of attack, which is corresponding to takeoff and landing, it is possible that you have shifted this wing from here, tail from here to here and you are claiming that it is not coming under prop wash or wing wake, this is fine. So, I am happy with T tail, but as you go for higher angle, what will happen? The wake will go in this direction. And that time what will happen? The T tail effectiveness will reduce at high angle of attack, T tail effectiveness will reduce. That means, earlier whatever T tail was generating a lift force at tail, now LT is reducing. It means, now enough lift force will not be there to balance the airplane. So, the airplane will try to pitch up. So, for a T tail when you are designing, please ensure that at high angle of attack, it should not generate pitch up. This is one of the serious issues with T tail and one has to be very, very careful. One should do exhaustive tunnel testing and see how the location is addressing the problem of pitch up at high angle of attack, right. Also, you could appreciate that because now this vertical tail is also taking load of horizontal tail. So, the vertical tail has to be strengthened more. So, the weight penalty comes. So, you are having weight penalty because now the vertical tail which is carrying horizontal tail all the loads, stress and all. So, I have to strengthen it. So, the weight will also increase. So, these are the flip side, but as I told you as a designer, you have to see how 1 plus 1 gives you what result you want, right. Generally, you will see the vertical tail are thicker tail 
और थिकर और सिंपल रीजन यू फाइंड नेविगेशन रेडियो नेविगेशन रेडियो ट्रांसड्यूसर्स एंटीना आर प्लेस्ड हियर so it's not that it is thicker a designer will try to use that that space available for an aircraft designer the layout designer always look for a space whatever space comes he will be say okay okay i'll accommodate this in this space and the flight mechanics man will tell oh don't put it there the cg shift will be there so that sort of a interior designer flight mechanics designer aerodynamics they quarrel so the chief designer takes the right the decision in consultation sometimes he veto some some aspects because he has the final goal what are the mission requirement he has to achieve right also you might have seen the empennage the, the, the part where all this vertical fin etc are housed so there are something like this we call it dorsal fin these are basically strakes these are basically if you want to understand from the aerodynamic language these are strakes what are aerodynamic strakes what is their role their role is to generate vortices vortex so that there is enhancement in the lifting capability for example if there is a wing and this is a leading edge after certain angle if i let's say this is a leading edge and this stalls let's say at particular angle if i put a sharp strex on the leading edge then that will generate vortex vortex which will delay the separation and also increase the lifting efficiency right so primary role of strex is to do that only to generate vortex which adds up energy to the flow and in turn you get a efficient aerodynamics as required for the airplane now this is dorsal fin this is primarily required keeping side slip in mind suppose the airplane because of some reason has gone into high side slip could be it has made an entry into spin and it is side slipping very fast and the moment the side slip angle let's say It, let's say it's more than 15 degrees, and there's every possibility the vertical fin may stall. If vertical fin stalls, rudder also will be ineffective. So you won't be able to control. So there, this dorsal fin is purposely kept here because dorsal fin is like a streak. It generates vortex, which impinges on the vertical tail. and give more energy additional energy so that delay and effectiveness delay stall and effectiveness is made more effective so that is the primary role of dorsal fin there a lot of work is being done on how much should be this angle what should be this length this is a part of your research work and lot of data is also available but for a designer he takes the initial uh, cue from the existing airplane and definitely when he goes for winter and testing he tries three four such dorsal fin configurations to ensure that for his aircraft this is quite sufficient also you will see ventral fins fin something here like dorsal fin you will also find ventral fins they are also like strex at high alpha beta combination they also generate vortex which helps in improving the directional stability of an airplane we'll be talking about this in detail as we progress into design of stability and control for the airplane 
But it's important at this point that you at least know, man, this is what this dorsal fin, this is ventral fin. They're basically strikes. Similarly, you'll find, if you see the fuselage of airplane, right, there are strikes here also. Now you'll ask me why there is a strike. See, after all, air comes from here. There's every reason to get the air decelerated, right? The energy loss will be there. So now this uh, strikes will generate vortex that will energize the falling fluid. So all these are small, small things, but they are calibrated in a tunnel for simple reason that fundamentally we know this is going to help, right? And from fine to finer design, this strikes plays an important role. So we'll be talking about this, how to design this as we progress, okay? But at this stage, we need to know this. Just to end today's discussion, this is another important aspect for tail arrangement. When you look through spin recovery, when the aircraft goes into spin, it has stall, it has a large vertical motion, and also it may side sleep it will spin also like this. All this combination is the characteristic of a spin. To ensure that initially when you are thinking of conceptual sketch, there are few care you can take, one can take to ensure that we have done enough at a conceptual stage to make the aircraft worthy enough to come out of spin or having enough spin recovery capabilities. And that is, if this is the empennage, and if this is the horizontal tail, and if this is the vertical tail you have designed, you could see at high angle of attack, that is, why high angle of attack we are talking about? Because we are talking of spin when it has gone to stall. So if I just extend it, we will find rudder is here. So all this portion will be blanketed, they will come under the wake and the rudder will lose its effectiveness. Right? It is also possible that if this is the empennage, if you have not carefully designed the tail and this is here and everything comes into the wake of wing at high angle of attack. This is a dangerous situation. Here at least some part of rudder is available. Okay. So what is done generally is, it is better that you put the rudder here, fine, and then take the horizontal tail little ahead of this. So what will happen if you take it like this? major part of rudder will be least affected because this much will be not affected. So, you have enough rudder power. What is done is generally you draw, these are all empirical, draw around 60 degree here, around 30 degree here. This is again from Raymer and see by placing the location of rudder and all how much area is getting blanketed or coming to the wake. If your 75 percent of the radar is out of the wake, you should be happy. Okay? Now see the people who volunteer for detail, they say simply, that if it is a typical detail and radar is here, so radar is not at all being affected because of wake because of horizontal tail. So they advocate, oh, that is why T-tail is better. But again, for T-tail, you should know that it has an inherent tendency for a pitch up at high angle of attack. This is another campaign goes on for T-tail is 
because of end plate effect that is is the vertical tail and you know end plate effect if this is the wing if this is the wing sorry and if we put somewhere here effectively i am making the wing two dimensional a step towards that because i am not allowing flow from the bottom to come over the top or effectively aspect ratio is increasing we say with end plate effect means it is actually increasing the effectiveness of the wing or the fin so by doing this actually this horizontal tail gets advantage of end plate effect okay so it become more efficient so it do not require that much of much of size if it didn't have the end plate effect so size reduces similarly vertical tail also gets advantage of end plate effect and in turn you say vertical tail also becomes very effective so i can reduce the size of the vertical tail so there is a reduction in the weight so what was the logic we said because of vertical tail because vertical tail has to take load of the wing so it has to be strengthened the logic is the debate is because of end plate effect now they become more effective so i can operate with a smaller size drag reduces and because of a lot of space here i can use it for housing radio antennas etc etc so why not i go for a detail i can handle the picture so this sort of a thing a debate goes on not withstanding the comment that detail always look elegant stylish the youth they prefer detail but yes you can use any style as long as you know whether it is affordable or not so i think with this i have tried to glance through the features of an airplane wing and tail as i look through and enrich enough to start drawing a conceptual sketch thank you very much